Good afternoon. My name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the um, Public Art Committee. It is 2 o'clock on Wednesday, July 14th. Uh, and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Marissa, can you call the roll? Yes. Ms. Jennings? Here. Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Here. Mr. Sallow? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, at the um, Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, Deborah Hennessy was selected to be the second alternate. Um, she has as yet not been sworn in. I'm anticipating that will happen shortly, and we look forward to welcoming her to our August meeting. Um, we don't seem to have any guests. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the June 9th meeting. I have one little question. Uh, well, we have to. Yeah. Oh, oh we, want, we have to make um, the motion first. Motion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll make a motion. Yes. Okay, Trish, second. Bill. Okay. Okay. Discussion. Okay. okay, on page seven, okay. on the second paragraph. <laughs> this is very minor, I know, but um, it says Mrs. Robinson suggested removing the deadline requirement adding another line in the approval process section that states that the proposal must be submitted at least one week before and incorporating a map, blah, blah, blah. Um, my question is one week before what? It doesn't state what. Does that make any sense? I, I, I read it and I just thought, wait right. a minute, it's not saying one week before what? Was that one of our meetings? The next meeting. Right, okay, yeah, can we add that in then? <coughs> yeah, before the uh, meeting, one week. Yes before the monthly meeting of the PAC? Does that sound right? And I think it actually says that on the form that um, has been loaded online. Right. Okay, um, may I have a motion to accept as amended? I make, I make a motion Trish, to accept it. Second. As second. amended. All in favor? Aye, any opposed? Okay, minutes are accepted as amended. Uh, old business, the Tarpon Springs High School mural project in Sunset Beach is deferred until fall of 2021 when uh, classes resume. Sports field mural project, Bill and David. Have, have you guys done anything? Well, I did pull a couple of, and I can pass these around. Um, they're, they're a little bit more iconic than, mm -hmm. than what we could look at, but right. when I traveled around to some of the fields, uh, the signage is actually very nice. There's mm. uh, n nice signage at every field with the um, the pilings, uh, right. kind of a maritime uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so they look really good, but there are opportunities to showcase perhaps what that field is, is all about. I know we talked about primary colors in, in some of the uh, facilities and, and different pieces that, uh, mm -hmm. that are each at each of the fields, but it seems like there's a, a, a theme at, at most of the fields, like Riverside is soccer, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Sisler, we've got the mural there and that's, that's baseball. Um, I think it's baseball as you go down Martin Luther King as mm -hmm. well. So there's also very nice locations right by the signage. There may be an opportunity um, for pieces similar to what I found here, but yeah. obviously these are much more iconic in, in size and statue than, than, yeah. than, than what we would look at. But we can't afford Klaus Oldenburg. Yeah. No. Those are fabulous. But the thing that makes it really interesting is if you take a look at the traffic along Martin Luther King mm -hmm. or along Riverside and you've got the, the middle school um, right there by, by the Riverside complex, mm -hmm. I, I think there's some opportunities for us to do a little bit of that spreading around of some of the you know, uh, public art that we had, we had talked right. about. So I just, I think it's an opportunity. Right. What, what, what do you, would you like us to do from this point forward, um, looking at the fields? Okay, I, I guess both of you have a handle on the fields and what sport they emphasize, like you said, soccer or baseball. 
uh, maybe make a list of what they are, like correlate the sport to the field. Okay. And could you, I mean, you can't get together, but perhaps each independently, could you prepare, um, you know, a call to artists? Okay. The thousand dollar, you know, top limit for the fee plus materials. Would that be for the mural side of things or the painting of things or you, what, what kind of direction? I, I think I need a little bit more direction and right. then I'll take it and, and David and I can run with it. But I think I just need a, a, a little bit more of a flavor from this group as to what we, how much effort we want to put into that with, with some of the other projects right. that we have going on. David, how do you feel about? Well, are we looking to do a statue at each field to represent what they're doing there, what sport they're playing, or just a mural? I don't or? think we have the budget for that. Okay. It would be great to do something like, you know, what Bill brought in, but I think I think we have to stick to that, you know, thousand dollar idea of a, either, you know, painting or a mural. Okay, so this would be doing like, uh, like the the bathrooms or or the facilities at each one kind of looking the same. Is that kind of what we're thinking? Whether well, either that or, uh, you know, emphasizing the sport, you know, if, if uh, you know, if it's, a, if it's soccer, you know, something that would, you know, be more, you know, illustrative of soccer, of a soccer, t you know, field. Okay. So like a call to artist, a thousand dollars and up to a certain amount or just a thousand? Well, the, the, the fee has to be fixed at 1000 so they, right. they can be covered by the uh, city's liability insurance. Would, would we want to start out, maybe David and I could identify where we think the highest profile location might be That's and start yeah. with one instead of, you know, trying to do too many and, okay. and maybe not doing enough by spreading it out over too many. Mm -hmm. And if, if the two of us can somehow non-communicate through <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> through Diane. Um, I believe Mr. Stackhouse Robert, has a... Yeah. Robert has a... Yes, Robert. Way down here, peanut gallery. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I think it's an interesting discussion, and I was just thinking that, you know, we could look at it both ways. I mean, uh, the thing about, about doing primary colors, for instance, gives an identity to each field, and it says, all right, this is part of a system. But then on each field, you could have, like say if one is a specific soccer thing, you could have uh, a mural that is an icon of what that is. I mean, maybe it's just a painting of a soccer ball on, on a, a red, yellow, or a blue wall, mm -hmm. uh, or, or some kind of a cutout of a soccer ball that's on, say, a chain link fence, so that there's a, an icon that just sort of identifies the usage, rather than, than making it a, um, a, full, um, a, a full mural project, make it coordinate with, with uh, unifying the sports fields. And I mean, if the sports fields have to be painted anyway, you know, they could be at random. I mean, it doesn't have to be any system for it, red, yellow, or blue. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they need to have nice red, yellows, and blues. I mean, they can't have icky colors, right. you know, but, but I think a nice basic, you know, color spectrum, red, yellow, and blue, and then, I mean, the fields could be painted differently, um, but the same colors. Do you, do you understand what I mean? And then, if there's an area that you can put an icon of what that field is. I mean, it could be a cutout of a soccer player, or it could be a painting of a soccer player, mm -hmm. or it could be a painting of the goal. Uh, it, but to where it, it's, it works in concert with, with the, the color scheme of the thing that's going on. I mean, right. that, that could be interesting and in that it gives it a continuity. It also gives it an identity. Right, so the artistic component would be the icon, not the actual paint job. Well, I think, I think, it's, I think you have to sort of see it as, as uh, the, the primary colors are part of the statement. Right. In other words, they are, uh, you know, it's, it's a body of, of, of work for all of the, the uh, fields. And then you have the, 
but you know, just a, a, a simple rendering of a soccer ball. It doesn't have to be artsy. You know, it could just be a, an identity of the soccer ball, and and uh, that could be maybe uh, you know you could get a lot of interesting things for a thousand dollars for that. That already gets you know you paint a soccer ball on a bright red wall, mm -hmm. or cut out a, a a soccer player out of aluminum. Maybe somebody has the capacity to do that for a thousand dollars. Cut out uh, a soccer player. Maybe it's just a silhouette of a soccer player. Uh, on a brightly yellow painted uh, chain link fence or something like that. Yeah, Lucianne? Yeah. I, I like that idea very much because it is unifying and it, it identifies, okay, this is a city recreational thing. I also think that doing the primary colors is easy and immediate. We mm -hmm. can move on that right. ASAP. And, and have an impact, and then the icons can come as they yeah. come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, so I guess we're kind of saying the same thing. The primary colors, the flat painting, would not be part of the call to artists. That'd be first so. step, and then right. I think we need to identify what do we do from that point forward. Right, you know. I, I think what you're saying is Yes, the, the city with our resources could go ahead with the painting. Right. That doesn't require a... Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just like a regular uh, call for artists, the, pre the site is prepped. And in this case, it's prepped red, yellow, or blue. Okay, right? And then it, they have to take that into account. Right. And we don't know whether which one's going to be red, yellow, or blue, because right. maybe, the, maybe the city, when they paint it, makes, it, makes that decision. Mm -hmm. It gives them an investment somehow. Right. I don't know. Well, well, I don't know about you, but I, I'm into giving them a little more direction. David? <laughs> well, one of the thoughts that I have is that there's dual sports at some of these fields, too. There might be soccer and baseball. So do we do two cutouts? You could do that. Or like a duo of them, some, perhaps, or something like that? I, I think somebody could combine those two images. Right. You know, a soccer ball and a baseball or a, you know, or a football or whatever is played there, field hockey or lacrosse or polo <laughs> right well it might change into that you never know <laughs> well but and, so, oh i'm sorry no no no. You go ahead i'm sorry so also we would probably want the same artists then to where, where we can bring them all together all the fields so they're not so segregated how many fields are there i think there's so five or six? Yeah, five, six. I think that we've identified that have the potential. Could do it, I mean, because the icon is not going to be a, yeah, you know, not going to be a big deal for anybody. I mean, anybody can paint a soccer ball in a, you know, in a way, and if you've got to paint five of them or five, you know, five different athletic things, that could fit within the probably $1,000. Yeah. Or could you, you could give them more money for that because you're asking them to do five things or six things. but. Yeah, or maybe we could break it up, yeah. like offer a thousand dollar a field. That way, we can stay within our That's insurance what I was parameters. Does that make sense? Separate it per field right. as different projects. But even having the same artists, I think, like say they're doing a geometric design of a soccer ball at this field, they do a geometric design of a baseball player at the next field, but they right. look similar. You know, the yeah, style. Yeah, so you have a unifying theme. Mm -hmm. Right. If we want to do the same exact image, type of yeah. style. Right, but we can break up the payments in such a way that each project would be independent so we can yeah. stay within the... Yeah, I know. think it's important to, to follow the procedures that we have and right. it's set up. I mean, the $1,000 budget, I think, works in this case in the city painting or prepping the surfaces. Right. Diane? I no, I was just going to say, when you start talking about icons, just be careful um, because you want to keep it in the realm of artwork and not perceived as signage of some sort. Exactly, yeah. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So is there any kind of maintenance schedule that the Department of Public Works is looking at for painting? I mean, do we know that there's a, a, one of these fields that may need to have some of the facilities painted? They do build those into, you know, different maintenance. You're probably seeing a lot of things happening. You know, they have their schedule. I'd have to find out, like, when that would be. Like, 
because I'm sure that they have it tiered by year, you know, like we're correct. You know, like so just we like we could get instance, into a sequence with them that they're mm -hmm. getting ready to, to to paint something. So right. if we could find out maybe what that schedule might look like, sure. that yeah, would be I great. Could do that. And I'd, I'd like somebody, I think, to, to pick the proper shades of red, yellow. That's a good red right there. On here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. That, that is good. All right. So, but I think we need to be specific with what colors we're looking at and making sure that that's yeah okay. Yeah. And yeah. then yeah. That's kind we of could use uh, Robert Pantone colors. Would that be the easiest to get? Yeah, you could pick. I mean, you just go to Lowe's and pick out your colors. Right. Yeah, and. Uh, um, you know, it's very subjective, but there, there is, you know, what is the perfect blue in the color wheel, you know? <laughs> and, right. I mean, it, it's, there is one, but there, there's, you're not going to buy it where they call it sky blue or something like that. Mm -hmm. you know? If we're looking to make a statement, I think we want to make sure it's the right. It's, it's got to be a real. It's got to be the right shade. You know, like the, there's, uh, you can see it in the advertising in places. Uh, one of the uh, automobile supply stores has red and yellow. Mm -hmm. Those are two good red and yellows because they really stand out, both of them. I can't, there's one down here on, on uh, Tarpon <coughs> Avenue, I think. It's got bright red and then there's yellow letters on it. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the blue just needs to be, I, I, I can't think of a place where I've seen the blue. Uh, but it's just a, well, I just bought a new car that's blue. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can go out to the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. They go out there and look at that one. <laughs> it's just a good bright blue. Right. You know, and, and um, yeah, I mean, it, it, select exterior paint. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what the city, do they go to Lowe's or Home Depot or do they have other kind of sources? I'm, I'm sure they've got some kind of contract. Yeah, the, everything's contracted, you know, a lot of okay. those things. When they're doing in volume, you know, kind of thing. But also, um, it's like, it sounded like from what I saw last month with the list that um, David and, and Bill had, looked like there was quite a few places, you know, within those sports fields. So if we could get like a picture of whatever surface you're talking about at each one, you know, like a, a photograph or something just to identify like where you, because if you're gonna do a call to artists, they're gonna wanna see the um, surface that you're they, that you want something for, and the dimensions, so they'll know what size, you know, kind of thing. So that's been my experience anyway. Now you guys photographed all the surfaces, yeah, right? Yeah, we have a lot of the. You did. Surf yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you could do it in two phases. I think that was brought up earlier, mm -hmm. that you could just paint the primary colors. That's then you've got the, then you've got the the surface already prepped, and then. Somebody, you show somebody, all right, this Sissler Field has a, I'm just using that example, has a, has a um, bright blue wall. Whatever you do on that uh, can work with the bright blue. Mm -hmm. but I think we almost need to go through the exercise of, of taking those photographs and using some Photoshop or something and really having an artistic eye look at saying this is how these colors should be, you know, in, in this particular setting. I don't think we should put that on you know, whoever's actually doing the rolling to make those decisions. Exactly. So. Well, when you order the paint, quite often when you go to professional paint supply stores, you say, give me a true red, a true blue, and a true yellow. And they can probably computerize that thing and come up with one that's just balanced just the right way. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I don't deal with that. So, you know, but I, I have seen up here on 19, there's a commercial Sherwin-Williams, I think. It, right. Yeah, you know, and, um, they, uh, I, I'm, I'm quite sure they can probably, if you say, I want a true red, you know, not, not, a, not an orange red, not a mm -hmm. violet red, but a true red, they, they probably know what that is. Right. And, and so the guys rolling it won't, but when you order it, I think, I think it could be done. And the, the other thing is just go get chips and... Uh, Mm -hmm. I think we want to tell them which walls we want which colors too. Because, Absolutely. Because otherwise I think that's going to be, you know, we, you may not be happy with the end result. Well, I, I was sort of thinking gives them something to do, you know, it gives them a sense of ownership as well in painting these, these fields. You know, I, I want to put a blue wall right next to a yellow wall. 
you know, and uh, the next time they want to put a red wall next to a blue uh, something, you know, so they, it gives them a chance to right. break it up. So, so uh, treating the, the primary colors really as, a, as like prepping a canvas. And it, it shouldn't matter in some, because those are the three primary colors. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter which wall is which, in a way. I mean, I, I can, it's just that each wall needs to be a different color, or so each you're, surface. You're, you're suggesting needs, that each wall is a different color, not a uniform primary color per field. Correct. No, yeah. Okay. Each, okay. Yeah, so you I mean. have, you have the primary colors. I mean, this is primary, so there's right. some, there's some message in that. These, this is primary. You know, the athletic fields are primary. That's why I'm saying this is part. This is sort of part of. This is part of the art project. It's just that we, as the committee, are sort of suggesting the right. uh, the improvement of, of the the fields by with our aesthetic uh, input into it, saying we want them to all be the primary colors. And there's a reason for it. They're bright and cheerful and they're primary, athletics is primary to community. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can go on with, with multi-layers of that, and, right. uh, and it, it fits within, I think, a lot of the modern language of, of contemporary art, in a way. I mean, uh, people are constantly doing icons of things on color fields, and uh, you get a contrast. I mean, you put a, you put a, a, a bright red wall and then you put a blue something on it, you could get a, a whole bunch of electric kind of color stuff coming. There's a lot of color theory that could be involved right. with that. When you take primary colors, they're really raw colors in a way, and they, they um, will make other colors, of course, the, the secondary colors are made up of a combination of those, and the tertiary mm -hmm. colors are made up of those combinations. But, um, so, I, you know, I think that if it, if it was random, it wouldn't look so corporate. Mm -hmm. Can I ask why we're asking the city personnel to, to paint these buildings? I think that should be part of the art project, that the artist should do it. You, you, I mean, I don't, that's a whole lot of buildings to paint. Do, do, does, would the artist have the ability to paint a chain link fence, say, around the, uh, the ball, you know, the, the the foul ball cage around the thing. You can is that make any suggestion you want, but then it has to get approved. Yeah. You know. So that's where I think the city, if they're going to have to paint some of this stuff, if it's rusting out or if it's really ugly, I mean, we could suggest they paint it. And this is part of a maintenance program of the equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a great, it's a more of an expense. I'm quite sure they'd rather just leave the chain link fence the way it is. And, and yeah, it's, it's kind up. of hard to paint chain link. I was just thinking of solid walls. Pardon? It's kind of difficult to paint chain link. I was thinking of just doing, you know, solid walls in yeah. the primary color, not necessarily. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of a big fuzzy roller. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I don't know. I, you yeah. know, it's a, it, it, it could be difficult, but it could be something that, that could work too. I mean, so. One thing that comes to mind, I love the primary colors, but will it stick out too much? Because they're all white now, so they kind of blend in with the field. Would it stick out too much? Would it bring the field in and make it feel tight if we have tons of different colors all around us? Would that be too much? I, I don't see how, you know, unless the, the field was surrounded by buildings. <laughs> Uh, you know, you've a got a few, you, you got a, a few buildings, right? And then you have some some uh, posts and things like that, and, um, and and a chain link fence here or there. I I don't see how that would do it. I mean, I just just came from downtown Dunedin and and parked right next to uh, the Dunedin ballpark, and they painted a bright blue. I mean, that's a nice blue on that one. Mm -hmm. So they painted it a bright blue and white, and it's it's in this kind of almost a, uh, if you've ever been there, it's in a kind of residential neighborhood in a way. Mm -hmm. And here's this big building, uh, and the blue is really very strong, and there's some of the red that they use. Uh, so uh, I, I don't, th I, you know, my, my instinct, is David, is not that it's going to be screaming at things, and it, it'll, 
uh, as some people said, it'll make the it'll make the field. And you run into this when people want to buy art. They say, "I like things bright and shiny," right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the field might, you know, look bright and shiny. Yeah, and uh, but not. I don't think it would take away from the field. Well, I think the the way to go, maybe, Bill, if you have the capability, is to, you know, make some samples in Photoshop of the, you know, different. Uh, you know, primary color combinations, like on a couple of fields. And Why don't I go and try to get some paint colors for the next meeting so that we can look at the primary yellow, right. blue and red, mm -hmm. step one. And then maybe David and I can, can take a look at some of the, the, the different facilities and see if there's one that sticks out that might, you mm -hmm. know. And if, if Diane, you can find out from a maintenance schedule, is there, is there a park that's due to be spruced up? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Yeah. And that, that's when I think we would utilize, you know, city staff to, to help. Because if they're going to paint it anyway, it would be a perfect opportunity. But I understand what you, your comment was if we're asking them to go paint every building on every part <laughs> throughout mm -hmm. the city. That, that's a little daunting. Yeah. So uh, we, we could, this is going to take steps. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Right. Yeah, this way. is going to be a, a, a process. Um, Okay. So that would Diane, at least take us, you know, right. a little bit further. Diane, uh, would there be a problem with Bill and David working together on this as, as fact sharing? I think so. Could you check with mm -hmm. Tom Trask? Even if it's to share pictures or because yeah, I got what I, mean. I have Photoshop it's, it's just, as well. How can you work together without working together? I know because I if, Trish, didn't you and Jules or Mm -hmm. Go down to see some muralists in, in different places. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, okay, I'll ask. Yeah. I, I I just I just find this very very frustrating because art is all about communication and we can't communicate and it's, you know I. You know I it, it's not like we're colluding to paint baseball fields or you know insider trading into what wall's going to be blue. Could we workshop it? Ah, that's an idea too. I mean, that way we can dip past the sunshine law, right? We can all sit around and throw out ideas. Right. And we're sort of doing it right now. Mm hmm but Yeah, we could just have a workshop just on that particular project. Diane, could you? You might want to kind of, um, Put forth a kind of like proposal of what you want to do, we need and a see more. if the city. You know, let me take it to the city manager and see if they would be, even you know, if we, he needs to get that approved by the BOC to right. print. I mean, to paint primary colors on city-owned buildings. You know, it's like hmm. there's just so many other people who would have to approve that. I would hate for you to spend a whole day workshopping something that's not going to go forward, you know, so I think okay. we need to make sure that it would be okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just kind of vet that idea and get back to you, Joan, on it and then you, and find out from the city attorney about David and Bill and then um, I'll also find out about the maintenance, you know, kind of thing and then um, okay. we can, I can send out a, a, like a another email to all of you just to kind of thing uh, and then we can maybe set up a, okay. a date for a workshop okay Is sounds that okay? good anybody it's, david well in my mind i'm also seeing the walls as staying white and even um, the mural being painted in primary colors in my experience i've painted a lot of buildings it's the worst and painting a red fine on a wall it's me i'll see every little dip in it you know, white is really hard to see, plus uh, colors other than white or silver are harder to keep clean. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that would create an issue to where they're going to have to clean the buildings more often or if it's going to look dingy after a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just another idea. I love the primary colors, but maybe even the white walls with the mural in the primary colors and however that might too. look. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe play with that in Photoshop a little bit? I, I, think, the, I think that you could do that, but um, is there a regular ma maintenance 
for these fields, apparently not, I mean, they're in such bad shape in a way that right. uh, they need to be repainted from time to time. And if the city takes pride in this, they will repaint it when it, when it, it needs to be. I mean, a mural's gonna go that way too. I mean, no matter how much protective stuff you put on it, mm -hmm. the, a, a mural will go. And, and um, so the mural, you have to decide what are you gonna do with that mural? You're gonna cover it over, you're gonna destroy it, you're gonna mm -hmm. fix it up again. Um, so, um, and, and uh, white tends to get neglected too. And if it's on the north side of a building, it gets, you know, it gets, uh, mold and stuff on it and so it, it depends on whether the city wants to be proud of their athletic fields and it's a it's something that we as a as as a as an art committee can recommend that that I mean this may not get done I mean this could be just pie in the sky in a way but it's mm -hmm. also something we're trying to recommend something that really enhances a, a, a a really important part of, of our community mm -hmm. in, in the athletic fields, the public athletic fields. And uh, uh, if the city wants to take pride in itself and see that this can be something they can maintain, I mean, it's gonna cost, yes, but, uh, you know, but it, it, it just, I, I, you know, it's just, it's just whether they take pride in it or not. Right. And, and we can suggest it and that we've done our part that way. Right. Whether, whether they accept it or not. We've done our part, we put forward this kind of a proposal. Okay. All right, so we shall have to uh, poll the powers that be and see how everybody feels about it and maybe, you know, make some drafts in Photoshop yeah, and see how. Things and get some ideas of some right. of the colors that we might Right, be I'd be willing to help you out on that too if you want to split up the, you know, maybe email some of them to Diane who'll forward them on to me and I can sure. manipulate them. Okay, anybody, uh, any more discussion on this one or shall we move along? Anybody? Okay. Um, the illuminated art boxes in your hands out, handouts. Diane has given us the 57 entries with the 30 images highlighted in yellow. And I'll just go over briefly to make sure we've, we're all on the, literally the same page. So we've got number three, number four, Number eight, number 10, number 12, number 13, number 14, number 20, number 23, 25, 27, 28, 29, 32, no, 31, 32, 34, 36, 39, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 49, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. Is that everything? Yep. Okay. So I guess the next step is, uh, Diane, I'll have to process them for you. Yes. And uh, we'll get them over to Alan, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and th this time it should just be, uh, you know, printing the decals because we're gonna reuse the, uh, the actual vinyl that's on the frames. Okay, anybody comments, any? When you tallied things up, were you you surprised how, were they fairly consistent or? Well, there was, there was a lot of the same ones. Okay, yeah. that yeah. showed up okay. Yeah, that's kind of how we got, got this, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of thing. You know, some of them just had like two extra, but you know, then there were some that had quite a few, you know, so. Okay, it was so you saw a pattern of, yeah. Just interesting, that's all. Yeah, I know. Did anybody make a clean sweep of all of this? No. Ah, interesting. <laughs> okay. No, there was nobody that, that got the, um, you know, the, what is it called? The, the lottery ticket. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the perfect <laughs> all of them. Okay. Um, 
Okay, current project updates. Christopher Still, Advent Health, that's just moving on. Uh, okay, the Black Heritage Project. Um, I don't know if you all are aware, but we lost a very valued member, Dudley Sally, you know, who passed away. Uh, he was really a remarkable man um, and contributed a lot to the community, uh, both as a young man in public office and, you know, in his later years. He was uh, the president of the Tarpon Springs Area Historical Society when he passed away. Um, he was recently at a, um, he made a presentation when the historic plaque at the Mears parking lot was unveiled and was also present when the uh, plaque outside the uh, cultural center and Elizabeth Indianos' mural was, uh, you know, given an, uh, an opening. Uh, uh, there'll be a graveside service at Cicadia Cemetery this coming Saturday at 10.30 a.m. And uh, in lieu of flowers, the family would like donations to be made to the Historical Society. Uh, I, I was especially fond of Dudley, and uh, you know, I'm, he'll, he'll be terribly missed. Uh, he was an intrinsic part of the selection panel, and uh, I've asked uh, another longtime or a lifetime resident of Tarpon Springs and historian uh, Nicolette Henderson to replace him on the uh, selection panel. Mm. Yeah, I think I think she'll. I know she was very close to Dudley. I know that they had discussions about the project, and I think she'd be an appropriate person to uh, to step in and take his place. Does anybody have any uh, other comments and questions about the panel? Okay. Um, I think at the last meeting we had, we kind of whipped the call to artist into shape. It's part of your handouts. Um, the primary changes were uh, moving the submission deadline to Friday, October 29th, 2021. Um, other than that, uh, most of this was uh, boilerplate uh, based on the sample that Diane had provided to me uh, for cafe listing service. So um, I'd like to entertain a motion to um, go ahead and get the uh, call to artists out. Lucianne? I'll, I'll make the motion, but I do have a small suggestion. Certainly. Do, do we need the motion first? Yes, please. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Um, we talked about this last meeting, and um, I feel like the selection art project overview, the first paragraph is a little bit ambiguous. Mm -hmm. um, two finalists will each be given a 750 artist fee upon completion, which must then be approved by the TS PAC for presentation to the Tarpon Springs City Manager and BOC. Um, it isn't, doesn't come really clearly to me. Gotcha, I know where you're going. Because yeah. we decided to just make, a, to present one. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's so just, the, yeah, right. you know, if you parsed it out, you would get that, but I think it needs to be a little Right, clearer. but it could just change the wording a little bit upon completion. And um, how about one finalist? Upon uh, given a 750 artist art, artist fee upon completion of their project, period. Right. Um, one, one finalist mu must be approved by the the uh, TSPAC for presentation. Yeah. You're okay with that? I think that works. It's. I think it's much clearer. Okay, Marissa, do you have that? Can you give me the page number? Sure, it's the top of page three, Art Project Overview. And it's the middle of the first paragraph on the top of the page. And it should read, two finalists will each be given a $750 artist fee 
upon completion of their project period, okay, one finalist must then be approved by the TSPAC for presentation to the Tarpon Springs City Manager and the Board of Commissioners. Everyone okay with that? I think it clarifies the wording. Marissa, you're okay with that? You got that? Okay. Okay. Um, given that amendment, do I uh, hear a motion to uh, distribute the uh, quilt artist as amended? So moved. Dan, second. Second. Trish. Second. Uh, David. Aye. Trish. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Robert. Okay. Can it's unanimous. Yes, Trish. Can I say, I think this was very well done. I was reading the explanation uh, of the project, and I and I thought that's very clear. It's very well written. Thank you. I like it. Okay. Okay, uh, all right, um, new business. Um, Mike Elwell, artist for discussion uh, and review. Uh, I'd like to hear a motion to uh, table this. I, can you refresh our memories? I don't remember what. Uh, this Elwell was uh, uh, an artist that was suggested by Vice Mayor Carr, who does, uh, you know, Statues on benches. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. I make a motion to table. Table. Yes. Do I have a second? Sure. Okay. Uh, all in favor? So, is this about bringing him into the called artist? No. It's just pushing it aside for now. Okay. Okay. David. Is that an I, an A, or an abstain? Um, pushing what aside? I'm sorry, I'm like. Um, reviewing this particular artist for a, a, a project. Which project was that? It was ambiguous. Okay. So. Uh, I just don't remember anything about the this gentleman. So okay. Okay. Then yes. Yes, 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 Bill. Yes, Lucianne. I'm sorry. It's, are you okay with tabling this? Yes. Sorry. Robert. Okay. Unanimously tabled. Okay, uh, Diane. I believe you have an update on the repair of the NIAD. Oh, was everyone aware of what happened to the NIAD? No. no. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, it seems that one of the NIADs toppled over, uh -oh. and it was. It was not vandalism, it just fell over. And uh, obviously had some damage. And Diane, take it from there. Well, um, <clears throat> so it was put in storage and um, we called St. Kate Art and um, so uh, Desmond's gonna come out sometime next week, midweek, and um, make an assessment of uh, what we need to do to repair it because we need to submit that for insurance. Thank God so. we have insurance. Mm -hmm. But anyway, one of the problems is is that two of the four NIADs have a base on them and the original two did have a base that was taken off to get flush, you know, with the other ones and um, because the, it, <laughs> It has a prong on there, it, it, it has movement. And so, because it's put in the earth the way it is, in soft rock, it's the, um, you know, the Greek limestone kind of thing, it all shifts and moves. It's not like it's in concrete. Mm. So, um, they're coming up with a way to secure the two standing ones so that they can go ahead and reinstall them and they won't move, right. you know, moving forward right. given I guess the location. The, right, I guess the sculptor's, sculptor's intent was for these to be displayed in an interior setting. Is that correct, Diane? I believe it probably was that way. I know I've seen them in her book right. um, outside and everything, but I guess it really, depends on how 
they are installed and what the original intent and purpose was, you mm -hmm. know, kind of thing. I think the ones that were in his showroom were, you know, made to be an interior, but it's just kind of like storybook time. Mm -hmm. um, the bench is a, kind of an interior bench too, so that's why it took them a long time to put whatever, you know, Deal surface into, on it right. to preserve it you know, for exterior. Okay. So was, the, was, the, was it a, um, a result of the storm? No, Maybe it just, it just, it, the, the thing is that the, the, the base of the statue was intrinsically flawed. It was, when it was installed, it was not um, cemented into the ground firmly enough you know, I'm sure if you've, you know, put stuff in your gardens, you'll know that, you know, certain things are more stable than others. And, you know, it was, you know, I'm sure we've all played with those solar powered walk lights where you just stick them into the ground. That's kind of what happened with these. Oh. And uh, they really needed a much more substantial base. Needs a footer, probably underneath mm -hmm. it. Right. So, as I said, fortunately, we have um, insurance for the repair, but I don't know whether that would cover the reinstallation. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what the proposal is. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but that'll be the first step, is to get the, um, you know, the, that to the insurance company and see what they'll cover. Mm-hmm. Is, she's is safe. the artist who um, made these still active? No, she passed away oh. two years ago, Diane? Yeah, I think so. Her name was Glenna Goodacre, if you want to look her up. She did the Women's Vietnam War Memorial in Washington. She's very prominent in some of her works down at the James Museum. Did she do a ma too? A what? Um, a ma? No, she did not she didn't do, do a mermaid, no. Okay. Uh, Diane, do you have any other announcements from the city? I did uh, give you all a copy of the uh, Elizabeth Indianos um, article that was in the 4th of July issue of um, the Tampa Bay Times in the Floridian section. So we got some really nice publicity right. there. Beautiful nice. article on the second page. So that's a kind of like a little reprint for you. Right. Yeah. It's uh, uh, Lucienne? Yeah, at the end of our minutes, it said that we were going to have an agenda item this time about other locations for illuminated art boxes. That's what I was going to bring up as well, yeah. Okay. I don't know if yeah, we... we both missed that, Diane. Yes, so. Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. At some point, you asked me to, to look in other places. Right. And I've been, I've been thinking about Martin Luther King, so I actually went and looked and drove every block. Thank you, fabulous. It's, it's kind of a mess. Um, there are the, the black cast iron, you know, sort of period looking things. Mm -hmm. There are wooden telephone poles that have a highlight on them and run all the wires. And then there are the big concrete pillars that you see on interstates and major highways mm -hmm. that have nothing attached to them. That's because they just installed them. Duke Energy is, has just installed them. Oh. So it's a transition thing. They're going to be doing it all around the city. But maybe those big sturdy things would be a place to okay. use illuminated art boxes. And they go all the way from 19 to Whitcomb. But that's a very heavy pedestrian pathway. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we might look at that to the extent okay. that the utilities and public works and everybody else would let us. Okay. Did, Did you happen to possession? take any photos of any of those? Or maybe I'll go back and. No. Well, I forgot to put it on the agenda, <laughs> so we're. Um, I'm not sure if that's viable because those are Duke Energies. I mean, we'd have to get permission from Duke Energy because they're their poles. Well, I have trouble hearing you, Diane. I'm, I'm sorry. So sorry. No, I was just going to say we'd have to check it out with Duke Energy because it's their poles. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Do you want me to send you a picture of them? 
I'm I go down that way all the time, so I'll take a picture. Okay. So is Craig Park off the table for that? Yeah, I took a look at Craig Park, and all we have are the the street lights intermittent down through there, and I really hate putting any more poles up anywhere. It just but, you know it was the same thing along uh, you know Safford. It, if we put additional poles up, there's there's some possibilities, but I don't I, I don't want any more poles. We've got enough poles sticking up. Um, <coughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it just it, we don't need to add any more but. to the to the cityscape. You know, the the one thing that might be interesting, but they're spread out so far, and with the the, the height of the uh, the wave wayfinding signs are, are are beautiful. I think uh -huh. they they turned out really nice. Uh, the ones that have been renovated. So there, there are some opportunities there probably with some of those poles that would work mm -hmm. uh, to hold some of these, but they're so spread out and I think we've kind of come up with the idea that these work better as a, a progressive, you know, walkable, right, to create a, almost right. a, you know, gallery type of a feel. So mm -hmm. not a whole lot of other opportunities mm -hmm. around town without, you know. Adding to this yeah. visual clutter, as you say. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Either that, or we start messing around with the, you know, the medians, which we have no jurisdiction over. Then yeah. you'd still have to put up poles to be able to, right. to hold them. Okay. Well, I guess we're. Uh, what about David, at if, what about at the parks, <coughs> where the sports fields? Maybe we could do one or two per field, or what have you. Mm-hmm. We're just dedicated to one sports field to start. Yeah, well, we've got uh, in the parking lot. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably a, almost a no-brainer yeah. might be Sisler Field because we could even start with just some historic images. I think that would, have, Diane. I think that would have a, a, a great place. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, you guys want to check out Sisler for some. Uh, <laughs> Location. I gotta watch my ideas. Huh? Yeah, be careful. <laughs> well, you, you have ideas. And it's a, I think it's a fabulous idea. Yeah, I think it'd be good. Yeah, and you know, and the, there's there's so much history attached to that field. I think that, as I said, I think that would be a nice idea to put some. You know, if, I mean, if we did four of them with eight sides, or even two of them with four sides, we could just get them rolling by using yeah, you know historic, historic images. Photos. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, you have your <laughs> more homework. Yes. Trish, you're getting off easy here. We have to let. <laughs> okay. I, I do have one more question about the um, Mr. LL. Yeah. So we really didn't, I didn't get any information on this. There isn't think. any. So are we tabling it for another time? Yes. To speak about? Okay. Can I ask what the, was it just a question from Commissioner Carr about using him or did we have, yeah, it was a, I just don't remember it at all. Right, no, he, he, uh, he mentioned it um, the night that I gave the um, annual report to the Board of Commissioners. He brought up two artists and this, this man was one of them and he makes uh, benches with figures sitting on them, hmm. you know, like these whimsical Story figures. Time. But yeah. it actually has not been brought to the committee. No. Officially. Okay. Right. And we haven't heard anything from the artist. We haven't had any okay. kind of applications from the artist or any interest from the artist. So uh, I don't even know what, you know, it's kind of nebulous as to what he's even, you know, uh, what type of work it would entail. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, if, if something comes up, you know, we could always revive it and in, in, you know in the future so uh, Diane you're all done with the city announcements I was just going to mention that your August meeting will be up on the second floor in that conference room where we were before have all of you been up there before in the second David, floor? I think it's I have okay, not. okay. David, David it's not. Um, it's pretty much right up there right if up the stair at the top of the stairs when you right. go up Okay. Over here. 
It looks like, I call it the courtroom. It looks just like the courtroom. Uh, we'll watch out for you. <laughs> you courtroom. remind us on our next. You okay. remind us on our next. Yes, time. yes. I'll remind you on. <laughs> okay. So I guess we could put that in the, uh, the little reminder, you know, maybe like in bold or something at the top of the right. uh, agenda. Will do. Okay. Uh, unless we have any other comments or ideas. Uh, like to get a motion to adjourn. I'm, I'm making a motion. That we Trish, adjourn. second. Nobody wants to leave? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Meeting's adjourned at 2.55. Mm. Thank you all. Thank you.